with a disclaimer. People at call centers are not treatable. <laughs> presentation tonight of seven minutes, around the world, 1,240 babies will be born, 35 of whom suffer intellectual disability. I hear some of you thinking, what is this condition? Well, I can tell you it is a lifelong debilitating condition. It's defined as an IQ of less than 70, but it's much, much more than a low test rate on an IQ score. It affects every area of life, your academic performance, your behavior, your possibility to interact, participate, and contribute to society. This serious disorder is also very prevalent. It affects 2 to 3% of persons worldwide. Also, it is a huge burden to the healthcare system. The cost of intellectual disability exceed the combined costs of heart disease and cancer. So it's actually very surprising that so little is known of the causes of this very expensive and debilitating disorder. Well, maybe it's not that surprising. Think about it. 97% of children develop normally. It's what we expect as happy parents, that they will smile at us, that they will start talking, walking, playing sports, maybe even going to university. We only start thinking about what happened when things don't go so well. That's one explanation of why we know so little. Another important one is intellectual disability is not a sexy topic in the medical world. Why not? Because it's not deemed treatable. And this is where my personal story comes in. The mission that together with Sylvia Stocker, who's also in the audience tonight, a professor at BC Children's Hospital, our mission to wake up that medical world and show that there are at least 75 diseases which are treatable. Now I want to convince you and physicians of this fact by showing you this video. Here you see a two-year-old boy who is seen in Children's Hospital with severe developmental delay and a Parkinson disease-like picture. The appropriate tests were done, and he was diagnosed with a neurotransmitter disease. He given one medication, and as you now see, he starts developing normally. He catches up, and all problems resolve. And I think one of the best confirmations of what one medicine or the appropriate test can do was actually the reaction of this family when they were asked to give consent to show this video. The boy had said, what, was that me? And the parents had said, thank you for adding to our diary of a time long, long ago when life was not so good and we have to think about life that's now good with our normal son. So, as I said before, it's our mission to wake up this medical world. How are we going to do this? Intellectual disability, not being very sexy, we had to change the way we dress. But we also had to make a research and care. I hear some friends of mine laughing, but it's not a good thing. Because it's a true story. So we had to make a research project, a care project, to obtain funding, to obtain money, to follow through with this mission. How are we going to do this? Well, there was some funding available from BC Children's Hospital Foundation. So we had to make a project that would fit Vancouver perfectly. So I was immediately thinking of the reason that I came to Vancouver, skiing, sailing, and playing golf in one day. <laughs> However, the professor, Dr. Stocker, said, no way, we have to think of other things. First of all, let's think of the gaming industry. Using digital technology is something Vancouver is good at. So we decided to make these kind of apps as clinical tools for physicians that they would be able to use to diagnose these patients. Also, something that very few people in Vancouver know is that in this city, one of the best genetic genomic sciences center exists of the whole world. So we were smart enough to think we better collaborate with these people because they can help us to define strategies 
to find patients with treatable diseases and improve these treat treatments. Last but not least, we were going to build on Vancouver's extreme strength, and that's the laid-back atmosphere that's around here. It's friendliness. I mean, you don't have to go to bed very late, but you have to get up early. This is something that I never have gotten used to. <laughs> but this friendliness really allows for research collaboration instead of research competition. And I think that's a huge value that we have around here. Also, people have told me about the mosaic in Vancouver, that every little piece, every person can find its place. And I think that was definitely proven when indeed we were granted this money to do the research as two foreigners. I think there is hardly another country or another city where this would happen. Anyway, the TIDE project, the Treatable Intellectual Disability Endeavor in BC was created. And our goal, our mission is to improve the recognition of treatable diseases in all children with intellectual disability so that we can treat, and if we're early enough, we can maybe even prevent delay, we can prevent brain injury, we can maybe make the difference between a child who's dependent on another for the activities of daily life in a wheelchair to someone who can participate fully in life. Um, so that is a huge, I think, endeavor, and we start out with calling it Type BC. If we're successful, we hope to expand it to Canada and the rest of the world, and we might start calling it Tide Global. So I hope in three years' time, when Lynn and Sam for sure will have turned the public salon into the world salon and are traveling the globe, that we may be invited once again. And then I'll be able to say to you seven minutes, and instead of 35 children born who will suffer intellectual disability, it will be 30 or 32. Let me tell you something on a bigger scale. Annually, each year in the world, there are three million children who will suffer intellectual disability born that year. If we do our homework, and if as physicians and researchers we start thinking about that these children might suffer something that is treatable, we might reduce this number by 150,000. That's, of course, considerable. Now, I want to end with telling you something personal. I spoke to you about the, the dress code and the call centers, but this TIED acronym is not all coincidental. Because Sylvia Stockler and I, as researchers, and our friends and, and uh, husbands know this, we share the secret passion, and it's something that has to do with the, the household. <laughs> so there's nothing better than really getting your laundry very clean. And I think what I would like to use, because I think Tide has been very well branded, is their wow power, I looked that up on the internet yesterday, <laughs> wow white power, to freshen up that dusty, not so sexy world of intellectual disability and to make things better for the children and the people, the adults out there who suffer this debilitating condition. Thank you.